Julius Caesar. Here is a well-known passage adapted from Shakespeare's version of Julius Caesar. Early one morning, as Julius Caesar was getting ready to go to the capital, he saw his wife approaching him rather fearfully. Caesar was able to see the dread in her eyes. He did not like it. His guard was up. He knew that something was wrong. Yet he patiently waited for her to speak. She walked slowly towards him and said, Please do not go to the capital today. Why? asked Julius Caesar. Why should I not go to the capital? Last night, I had a terrible dream. I am afraid that something terrible will happen to you if you go. So please stay with me here, at least for today. She pleaded. Julius did not believe in superstitions. He could not have reached his position with a belief in superstitions. He was certainly not going to miss the session at the capital because of a mere dream. Grow up. You are not a child. Stop behaving like one. Dreams do not mean anything. He admonished. Today is Ides of March. The fortune tellers have always warned you about this day. She persisted. Caesar considered this for a moment. Then he remembered the warning of the fortune tellers. He did not believe in them. He had only gone because Brutus and his wife had forced him to. He could have ignored it easily, yet this time something stopped him. It wasn't just his wife's dream. Ever since he woke up, he had this feeling of uneasiness. In all eventualities, nothing would go wrong. On the other hand, one day was not a big deal. Nothing important was planned for today. So, he decided to stay back and make his wife happy. Okay. I will not go to the capital today. Happy? Yes, I am happy. She smiled back with relief showing on her face. When Cassius and his friends heard that Caesar was not coming to the capital, they felt an opportunity slipping out of their hands. They had plans for today. This was unacceptable. So they started planning on how to lure him out to the capital. They started a rumor that the senators were planning to offer Caesar the crown. This was something that Caesar had been dreaming about for a long time. He decided then that he was not going to miss it for anything. Needless to say, Julius Caesar appeared in the capital, dressed for receiving the crown. Both his enemies and friends greeted him. Slowly, his friends, including Brutus, started encircling him as he walked towards the hall. Cassius gave the signal. Brutus was alerted and he pulled out his knife to attack Caesar. Caesar was shocked. He was preparing to be crowned. He did not expect this attack. He saw his friend Brutus among his attackers. You too, Brutus! Julius cried out. In reply, Brutus simply plunged his knife into Caesar. Other attackers followed. They kept on stabbing him again and again until he died. Caesar's death led to an uproar. The people within the capital got agitated and wanted to know what was happening. They wanted to know why Caesar was killed. Cassius has planned this all along. He knew that this situation would arise. Brutus knew what he had to do and followed the plan. He stepped out and addressed the gathered people without fear, remorse or guilt. Dear brothers, hear me out. Give me an opportunity to explain the reasons for killing Julius Caesar. Julius was one of the greatest warriors of Rome. Nobody can question his devotion to the Roman Empire. He lived for Rome and he fought for Rome. But something changed with the death of Pompey. There was nobody left to question his authority. He started becoming ambitious. He wanted power for himself. He wanted to become the emperor of Rome. He wanted to rule over us. He wanted to make his brothers slaves. This we could not accept. 
This goes against everything in which we believe, everything that our great republic holds dear. With this, Brutus felt silent. Few people in the crowd started murmuring. Brutus raised his hand and there was complete silence once more. So we had to do something. We could not allow him to succeed. We debated and finally decided on silencing him forever. Taking this action was not easy. But we did what we did because we love Rome and its people. Rome is a republic. We could not allow it to become anything else. We could not allow dictators to rule us, even dictators as noble as Julius Caesar. Now is the time. Speak up. Did we do the right thing? This speech fulfilled its purpose. The assembled people were moved by these words. They could hear the truth behind them. They started cheering. Then the crowd was calm. This is what Cassius was counting on. He and his friends were happy. But they could have never imagined and prepared for what happened next. Mark Anthony was a soldier. He was very close to Julius Caesar. He was like a shadow to him. Julius's murder had shaken him. The cowards had murdered him. He wanted revenge. Brutus had calmed the crowd. Anthony and his men picked up the body of Caesar and silently carried it over to where Brutus was standing. They placed the body before the people. Anthony carefully selected his words. He was well aware of the danger. Julius had been killed and he could be the next. Friends, Maybe Brutus is right. Maybe Julius Caesar wanted to rule us. But he was loyal to Rome. He was a great warrior. We had fought for this land. None of us can deny this. Roman legions under him have attained victory after victory. They crushed every rebellion that arose. Under his rule, the legions never saw the face of defeat. He was a great man. Now he is dead. There is nobody in Rome who can replace him. Mark Anthony's words were having an effect on the crowd. Brutus's influence was dying down. The people started feeling sorry for Caesar's death. I do not understand the need for killing Caesar. He was offered the crown on a number of occasions in the past. He always turned it down. If he wanted power... He could have taken it any time. So why this sudden need for killing him? Caesar loved Rome and its people. Do you know what he did with all his wealth? He left it to the people of Rome. Have you seen his will? Here it is. With this, he started waving the will before the people. This time, the people started cheering for Caesar. This was what Anthony had hoped for. The people were divided. Anthony wanted revenge, but he did not want murder. He wanted revenge with the support of the people. He had sown the seeds of his revenge. Anthony succeeded in what he had set out for. The death of Julius Caesar laid the foundation for a civil war. Two parties emerged. One was led by Brutus and Cassius. The other was led by Anthony and Octavius. Octavius was Julius Caesar's nephew. He was also the rightful heir. Both the groups were supported by their followers. Rome was divided into two. War raged on for years. Thousands of people died. In the end, Brutus and Cassius were killed. Anthony and Octavius achieved victory. But this victory was bitter for Anthony. He knew that Brutus was not a traitor. He knew that Brutus was a noble man. He did everything for the welfare of Rome. Anthony grieved over the loss of a friend.